Hello, friends. I hope that you've been having a good holiday if you celebrate it. And if you don't, I hope that this video can keep you company. In today's video, we will be doing some figure studies using just a ballpoint pen and some brush markers. So over the last couple of years being on YouTube and even before then just being an artist on the internet, one of the most commonly asked questions I received is how to improve upon or understand drawing the human figure. And the reason why I often glossed over this topic was because I never felt equipped to really provide helpful information since I myself do not think that figures are my strong suit. And I think that I have a long way to go in being, you know, proficient at it. <laughs> But I think it's fair to say that, you know, while people are my main subject matter, it's definitely not something I claim to be an authority on. And it's not an easy thing to learn. And much like anything, it takes a lot of time and effort to approve upon any skill. So that being said, I hope to at least provide some insight into how I currently am approaching figure studies and hopefully you can learn something from hearing and watching my process. I would also like to note that I am personally not looking for critiques and I understand that the drawings that you see here are far from perfect, but again, I hope that even though I am not the most skilled or the most qualified person to be showing and talking about figure drawing, that showing what I've got in my current wheelhouse will at least help you. So first things first, one of the most important pieces of advice for learning how to draw the figure is to use good references. And if you have access to life drawing sessions, whether it be at school or an independent studio, I highly recommend it if you can draw from life. But of course, that's definitely not possible for everybody and it's not available for everyone. But thankfully, the internet has a vast amount of resources for you. And I am definitely taking advantage of that now that I'm no longer in school. And of course, due to the pandemic, life drawing sessions aren't really a thing right now. So my absolute favorite resource right now is Graffiti Studio. If you haven't heard of them yet, Graffiti Studio provides really high quality photo sets specifically geared for artists to use as references in their work or for studies like I am here. They have a vast range of collections from classic figure drawing reference poses and they also have themed and costumed photo sets. They have couple poses and they even have environments as well if you were looking for something beyond the human figure. The reference pack that I am using in today's sketchbook session is the female character pinup poses. I decided to pick this one for the video because it might not come to as a surprise, but I absolutely love pinups and I enjoy drawing them. So this was the perfect place for me to practice that. So obviously there are many other options on their in their repertoire. So if you are interested in checking out any of the reference packs, Graffiti Studio was kind enough to team up with me and give all of you a code for 20% off your purchase. So follow the link in the description and use my code I'm a wonder 20 to save some coin and get some amazing photo packs. All right, so I'm sure some of you might be wondering why we've jumped ahead here to the second page. And the reason for that is because admittedly, I have not been doing a lot of drawing and painting this past month, let alone figure drawing. So I was feeling pretty rusty. And so because of that, I was also feeling self-conscious and I was just dissatisfied with those two those first two figures that I drew on the first page so I decided to stop filming and just sort of power through the rest of the page and fill it up with a bunch of figures without feeling the pressure of having the camera on and being filmed and so after I felt a little bit more warmed up by filling that first page with a bunch of figure drawings and so I 
returned the next day to try again and film for this page that you're seeing here. And I definitely felt a little bit more confident after kind of going through a number of figures uh, beforehand. I think that similar to like an athlete it, as illustrators and artists, it's good to kind of warm up your hand and your kind of drawing abilities, I think, especially since for me, like I hadn't felt like I've been doing a lot of drawing lately. And so you kind of need to acclimate yourself again, which just seems kind of strange, but that's kind of how I felt going into this. And I also decided to bring in some brush markers as well to shade some of the figures just to give it a little bit more interest. And if you are familiar with my work, you know that normally when I sketch, I use an erasable colored pencil. However, being the indecisive Libra that I am, I would often waste a lot of time erasing and redrawing over and over. And so in order to force myself to be more decisive and just live with the imperfections, I now often do my figure studies with a ballpoint pen. And I personally really enjoy using a ballpoint pen over like a felt tip or a fine liner because you're able to get more variations on your marks, whether you go in with a light hand or a heavier hand. So in the earlier stages of drawing the figure, I use less pressure to achieve lighter and thinner sketch lines, which helps me map out where all the different elements of the body is going to go. Of course, the downside of using a pen as opposed to a pencil is that sometimes I end up with poor placement of the figures on the page, whether I did not give enough room in between each drawing or if a figure ends up running off the edge of the page. A thing that often occurs for me is that when I'm drawing something, it slowly just gets larger and larger than I originally intended, which then leads to awkward positioning. But with that in mind, if you have a similar issue like I do with that, the important thing is just to allow for the limbs to run off the page or for the figures to slightly overlap. I think that it's important to get the proportions as accurate as, a, as possible rather than getting distracted by trying to get them to perfectly Tetris with each other. And then you end up, you know, uh, skewing, like enforcing the different body parts to fit perfectly on the page. So if you find that, yeah, you're the foot or the leg or the arm or whatever is going to run off the page or if it's going to overlap with your previous drawing, just allow it to happen if that's how the proportions look to you uh, rather than, you know, forcing it to fit perfectly. Kind of similar to when you see those images of either banners or cakes when someone is writing like happy birthday and you can see the the last few letters getting like smaller and smaller because they're trying to fit it all onto the page i think that subconsciously what we might try to do that when we're trying to draw these figures um kind of collage on a page like this so just try not to get distracted by kind of that mindset and just allow the figures to overlap or whatever it is um as you're working on it and you know that's just one of the things and the kind of the imperfections of working traditionally as opposed to if you're doing figure studies digitally if you are doing this digitally obviously you can resize reposition the figures however you want but for me i just i don't know there's something very beautiful about kind of the imperfections i guess about them overlapping a little bit or seeing kind of the under sketch here and things like that. So yeah, I'm trying to adopt um, a imperfect, just e embracing the imperfections in my sketchbooks. And I think something like figure studies or any kind of studies that is just meant for an educational purpose or a learning purpose, just letting it be a little messy and that's okay.
And on that note, another thing that I also do with my figure studies is to focus more on the overall gesture and pose and less on the small details. So as you would have seen here, most of the time I skip over drawing the face and all the individual fingers and toes. At the scale that I'm drawing them at, it would be difficult to draw all of those details in anyways. And especially this exercise for me is more so trying to practice the overall body and posing as opposed to focusing on hands or feet. And yeah, as you can see, the way that I approach feet is basically as if they're wearing socks. And um, yeah, of course, this is just my own personal way of approaching it. If you're drawing much larger, you can definitely include as many details as you see fit. Over the years, I've definitely gotten more comfortable with the general proportions of the body, but something that I continue to really want to improve upon is having the figures feel more fluid or dynamic. So something that I try to be conscious of when I'm drawing is to almost exaggerate or push the pose a little bit further than I think I should. And this usually leads to a much more lively looking pose. I'm not sure if that entirely makes sense, but basically I felt like I often struggled with my characters looking a little bit stiff. And so I find that for me, I think my work would benefit a lot from the characters feeling a little bit more dynamic in their poses. And so I felt like if I, you know, push the, you know, the tilt of the hip or the spine or whatever it is, just a little bit more than my brain thinks I should from like the reference photo, then usually it ends up looking a lot better. And another thing that I wanted to share that I think is important to pay attention to is that it's really good to pay attention to where the majority of the weight is on the pose. So whether it be, you know, the weight is shifted onto one leg or foot if they're standing or whether it's, you know, their butt and or like their arm and their hand when they're seated and, you know, if they're leaning some of their weight on like a hand or something. I find that when you pick up on those kinds of things and try to convey where the figure's weight is being shifted to, it helps anchor them to, you know, the ground or the thing that they're seated on and in the composition or the page. It just gives it a little bit more life when you look at those things as opposed to them feeling like they're completely floating or that they have no weight or gravity on them. Overall though, everyone is going to have their own way of approaching figure drawing as well as their own priorities. So for example, artists whose style is high realism, then they will likely be trying to capture all of the details and proportions as accurately as possible. Whereas for me, I lean for a more stylized art style, so I don't mind if the legs are technically too long or the shapes are a bit more simplified, things like that. And this is something that, you know, you'll figure out as you create more and the more that you practice and the more that you figure out what your voice is as an artist. And of course, those things might change over time too, and that's perfectly okay. I know that when people ask me how to get better at drawing, the last thing they want to hear is that you need to practice and put in the hours. But unfortunately, it's true. There is no shortcut solution or secret magic trick. At least, not that I am aware of. And if you do know, let me know. <laughs> but I will say, if you spend hours practicing without reference photos or working from life, then that will only take you so far because the library of knowledge you have in your mind is limited. So it is really important to be consuming and absorbing new information, whether it be reference photos or working from life, so that you can continue to build that library of knowledge. 
So practicing with intention is perhaps a more helpful piece of advice if you want to improve upon your drawing skills or really any skill. And as well, it is important to view the approach that multiple artists have. So while maybe some of you might take away some helpful advice or seeing the way that I approach figure studies, maybe it will be helpful for you. But some of you might have a totally different approach to the way that you see figures or the way that you see illustration or drawing and it might benefit you from watching a different artist approach you know their figure studies so it is important to always be searching for resources from multiple different places as well as multiple different artists But yeah, I think that's really all I have to say about figure drawing. And with that, since this is the last video for me for 2021, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has supported me this year, whether it be watching and commenting on my videos, interacting with me on Instagram, purchasing from my online shop, or being pledged to my Patreon page. I think it's safe to say that this year has been challenging for all of us in a multitude of ways, but I want you to know that your support has literally changed my life and I'm very grateful to have this amazing community here on the internet. I hope that my videos have been helpful, you, helpful to you in some way, whether you learned something new were encouraged to try a new art supply, or I was just able to be a form of entertainment and keep you company. No matter what kind of brings you to my YouTube videos or my content, I am very glad that you're here and I'm so thankful that you are here. And before we go, I just wanted to give an extra special shout out to all of my patrons who have supported me over this past year. If you don't know, Patreon is a platform where I post exclusive videos, extra content, live streams, and I also send out physical rewards as well, such as a print and a sticker. So here you can see I did a art book tour this month and I showed off all the different art books, zines, and graphic novels that I own. And I kind of talked through all the different books that I have. And I have lots of other types of videos that I post only on Patreon and exclusive behind the scenes content as well. So if you're interested, I'll have the link to my Patreon in the uh, description down below. Anyways, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me this year. I really appreciate you and I hope that hopefully 2022 will be a better year for all of us. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.